Hey everyone, and welcome back to another YouTube Live from CompTIA, where we are all ears to answer your IT questions. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more great IT resources to help you get to where you want to be. If you're new here, I'm Kelsey, and I am joined tonight by a few new faces for a very special YouTube Live, Ask Me Anything, or should it be called Ask Us Anything? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> that acronym isn't as good as AMA, but <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the uh, of the newbies, you've got a limited time to cash in on your free IT training during this time of uncertainty, uh, which hopefully you know will become a little bit more certain soon. But CompTIA wants to be there for you in case you're considering a career in IT by offering free online training for. CompTIA ITF Plus or IT Fundamentals Plus. This is a 30-day online training license that is actually normally $180, but you guys get it for free. So make sure that you act fast. That's going to be in the description. Um, if you've been sticking with us for the past couple of weeks, we appreciate you. And uh, we want to, you've obviously had the pleasure of soaking in a bunch of James S.'s knowledge throughout all of this. James, for our new viewers, um, care to introduce yourself? You bet. Hi, everyone. One. I'm James Stanger. I'm calling in from a, a, a little town called Olympia, Washington that probably nobody's ever heard about. So I'm very pleased to be here. Welcome. I'm the chief technology evangelist. Uh, my job is to talk to IT pros all the time about stuff like starting the career all the way through stuff like cybersecurity and the cloud. Happy to be here, everyone. Yeah, James was actually uh, live earlier today. He's been our, our star of the show recently. Um, he was live over on LinkedIn talking about DDoS attacks or distributed denial of service, which if you don't know what that is yet, maybe a little bit long, a little bit later in your career, you might be able to dive into it. But <laughs> thanks again for that, call. James. Give me a call and we'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, so now that you know a little bit about James S., I'm excited to bring you double the James tonight with a side of Amy. So James C. and Amy, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, so I'm Amy Cardell. I am really involved with industry. So my job at CompTIA is to work with industry, education, and government to create opportunities for new techs. And uh, I come from a deep background in the IT industry and can speak to you from that. And I also was former chairman of the board of CompTIA, so saw around the world how people get into tech careers. And I'm happy to bring some of that nuts and bolts tackling to you tonight. And I'm uh, the other James, James number two. Uh, I'm a user experience designer and I work on our learning team, help building products. And I specifically focus on um, a variety of the components like performance-based questions and accessible design. Awesome. So each of our guests tonight has a special set of skills and they are experts at what they do. Um, I'm very blessed to be able to work alongside them every single day. Um, we're going to prop up this AMA with a few FAQs that we received last week and that we get all the time. But um, when it comes to the AMA portion of this, which we're going to get to really quickly, um, you can lean on James S for certifications and IT career path questions, mm -hmm. James C for questions when it comes to CompTIA's training solutions and how to best use them. And of course, um, if you want to speak to someone that directly has their boots on the ground when it comes to hiring for IT, we have Amy. Uh, she's got a wealth of knowledge as well for us. So we will be here for the next four Wednesdays helping you transition to IT. And we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into these FAQs. But now that you know a little bit about our guests, feel free to start filling the chat box. We've got our team in there tonight to show your questions live during this Ask Me Anything. And we're really excited to get to it. Um, First, the question that we get asked the most probably is uh, what kind of salary can I make in working in IT? And I mean, I get it. Money, money, money. Everyone, you know, everyone wants to know the money side of the issue, right? So um, one thing to note, whenever we do speak on salaries or wage data, it boils down to um, it depends, you know, so please kind of use that caveat. It depends on things like location and industry and demand for the job. So um, we'll definitely have more on that. But we actually um, had two resources that we announced last week. One of them is our cyber states research, which gives you IT job and salary data down to the metropolitan area, which is awesome. And the second is our IT careers roadmap, which is an interactive tool that helps you guide, kind of guide you along your IT path, no matter where you may be right now. So shameless plugs out of the way. Those links will be in the description, of course. Um, but Amy, do you care to kind of tackle this salary question? 
I'd love to. So when we talk about salaries in tech jobs, I think the words on the street that they're well-paid jobs. Hopefully that word's gotten to you as well. Now, the reason that's true is a couple fold. The value you can create in any job is based on how much value the people you touch can create. And if you're in IT, you're a person who is making more people more valuable. So therefore, you have a leveraged effect and can be paid more. You're worth more. It's a really interesting phenomenon. So if you think about why does someone who have a million followers on Twitter have such a, a, a high salary, it's because they touch so many people. They are relevant in adding value to those people in some way. But in technology, we really see that you're adding value by helping other people do their job more efficiently. It's a leveraged, scalable tool. And if we look at technology jobs, we also think, okay, um, what companies are being invested in right now? Well, there's a lot of investment in technology companies for the very same reason, and that affords them the ability to pay more. Technology is the darling industry. Technology in the U.S. is the center of that industry, and so we have a real opportunity to be part of that. And I would recommend you look at those links that Kelsey mentioned to see what those salaries can be in your area. You know, I also, so, I also think. Oh, uh, sorry. Go uh, ahead, James. That's right. I also think it's interesting about uh, when it comes to salaries. The more unique a skill you can bring to the table uh, is is really important. You know, the more that you bring a skill that can't be easily automated or easily duplicated. Uh, if you find yourself copying and pasting things a lot, you might get You might get duplicated or automated. If you know what I'm trying to say, it's that kind of unique skill set that uh, that a lot of folks are looking for. So, thanks, Kelsey. Yeah. No. Of course. So um, the next question, uh, before we get to yours, I know that there's a ton pouring in, so thank you guys so much. Um, the next one is for James C. How long does it take to train for a CompTIA certification? Yeah, sure, good question. Um, the short answer tends to be between one and six months. Uh, the longer answer is really depending on what level of certification you're going for, as well as like what kind of experience you already have. So if we're talking like, I need to get started from scratch and learn everything from zero to 100, then you're gonna to wanna to use something like CertMaster Learn, um, which is a 40 to 50 hour, depending on the certification you're learning, uh, product. And you'll go all the way through everything with a bunch of interactives and a whole bunch of content and everything. And that can take um, months to do. And um, with any good learning, it takes multiple times to go through the content instead of just going through once and saying, okay, I'm done. Um, it may take multiple times and uh, really need that extra like boost in learning. Um, but we have shorter products as well, such as CertMaster Practice, if you really want to do kind of a last mile test. You know, I've, I've learned this stuff before, I'm, I'm pretty ready, I think so, but I really need to check. That's not like 30 days before. So it's really, um, you know, what exam are you doing and how much experience do you already have? Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so we've got a ton of questions pouring in and uh, we've got our team in there to help us choose which one's going to come up first. So let's see. Hike State, for, uh, State 48 says, hi, guys. I was looking into the IT Ready Technical Support course via CompTIA Tech. Is that worth it to pursue? James, could you help us with that? Uh, James, uh, James, oh, James. Or the other one? <laughs> James in my, uh, I'm not sure where you are in my Brady Bunch squares, but uh, yes, James S. Please. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it'd be a terrific thing. You know, when it comes to IT ready, uh, the IT ready support course. Yeah. That'd be a fantastic course. Cause what it does is it, it brings you from the ITF plus level all the way through to uh, a plus. Let's see if I can get my hand off screen, off screen uh, to a plus and up this, uh, up the CompTIA roadmap. So I think that's a terrific, uh, way to go. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, All we right. believe tech careers should be accessible to anyone anywhere, and that's a great way to get started. You bet. Absolutely. Okay, Team Clark says, I am looking to start a career in network security, and I will have my BSIT next year, Yay. and I'm getting security plus this year. That's awesome. Um, is there anything else that he should do to get ready? You know, uh, I'll answer this. So, uh, sorry, folks. I'm Oh, well, uh, I'll answer this by, by giving a positive spin on uh, somebody commented saying uh, uh, I took a community college class only to be told to you know repair computers, right? Let me put a positive spin on that. As you are doing your cyber, learning your cybersecurity career, do anything you can to get hands on in what you're doing. 
you know, for example, if you're if you're already at that security plus level, I can mention things like virtualization. You know, like get your copy of VMware or I use VirtualBox going. Start downloading stuff and seeing if you can break it. Don't don't hack in anybody else's stuff. But but uh, you know, get hands on. That would be my first step. Uh, and get a mentor would be in my second step. And if I can piggyback on that, James, I'd like to say that work experience gap is going to be what helps you set you apart. And so anything you can do in a competition setting to have some experience that you can put on your resume through your school or maybe through another organization, capture the flag event, anything like that would set you apart. And um, any kind of part-time job you can get in IT might be a good thing to look for. But I'll tell you a secret interview question I use a lot in industry and I've heard other people use. That is, tell me about your home network and how you secure it. Tell me about your PC at home. If you don't talk to me like a CISO and that you know your stuff and you're excited about your computer, you you, you won't come across as well. So you can do things um, on your own network that you can talk about to build that experience. Because the catch-22, of course, in applying for a job is you need experience to get a job, but you need the job to get experience. So try to, try to bridge that by even volunteering, maybe an organization you're involved with to help with IT, put something on your resume that gets you some practical experience and um, use the tools, you know, uh, make it happen at home, even if you have to, because mm -hmm. um, that'll really set you apart. I was gonna mention volunteering, that's a great idea, but I, that secret interview question, that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. That is a good one. Okay, so the next one is from L. West. I just passed the CompTIA ITF plus certification exam. Congratulations, everybody. Yes. Okay, way to go, L. West. Um, I'm wondering what jobs I can do now to enhance my knowledge and prepare me for the A plus certification. Uh, piggybacking or, or just amplifying uh, what uh, Amy was talking about, focus on uh, uh, helping get get your own network up up the snuff, right? You know, focus on troubleshooting for yourself, and then I would uh, start looking to see if you can help other people because as you get experienced in doing that, uh, you'll uh, do well. Uh, when I first started doing uh, uh, IT support work, uh, I did it for the English department. I was getting, I think, I was all but dissertation at that point. And uh, there were a lot of people that had real problems with their PCs back then, they just had no clue. And so I started volunteering and helping out. And after a while that turned into paying gigs for me. So there's that. I love that. And the other thing I'd add is you, you're you coming to this with some background knowledge. Maybe it's in the field of hospitality or maybe it's in the field of real estate or maybe it's in a very specific other domain. And if you can stack what you've now added in technology on top of what you already know, knew in a domain of expertise, you know, helping people uh, format their dissertations in Word at the back in the day was <laughs> definitely something you probably got very good at, James, because you oh knew that, right? Mm -hmm. And dealing with all those crazy uh, section breaks and page number and headers and formatters. And, you know, if you have something you know that you can add technology to, you have just set yourself apart. and can go specifically after the next step. So I would say, um, look for what you're already good at. If you're working for a company already, try to get a foot now toward technology in that company or use that domain expertise um, outside of that organization and try to add to it. So um, you'll have an easier entree at the entry level if you can build on what you already know. Don't try to start uh, something totally outside your 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 expertise because you probably already have uh, a foundational level to start with something one of the things we're doing uh, recently with uh, AWS is helping warehouse workers transition into IT. Right. It's really interesting to see that uh, these are people in working in the warehouse and what they're doing is they're bringing their expertise. So they may not be forklift drivers like a person here earlier in one of the comments was saying, but they're basically saying, well, I know what my people in the warehouse need to know. It's that kind of expertise, right, Amy, that you bring to the table. Absolutely. Right? Understanding the business, even and that example is perfect, you know, from behind the scenes, like, oh, this is how it works back here in the real world, can really inform good decisions and tools moving upstream. Because it's, and the funny thing is, you'll take what you're good at for granted. I think that's true yeah. with our natural yeah. talents as well. You know, people will say, oh, you're so good at connecting with people you don't know. And you'll think, really? That's easy for me. Well, yeah, that's why you're really good at it. It's too easy for you. So don't take for granted what you already know if it's auto mechanics if it's airplane stuff like that. Every, the cool thing about technology is it's in every industry. 
every company is a tech company now in a way. And so you can take even a hobby, like let's say you're really into beekeeping or something. I mean, there's going to be a tech job or a website or somebody who's very specific to your, your interests and hobbies that you can apply those tech skills to. And, oh, I was going to say, Amy, like that's what our next question is even about. I mean, you take being good with people and being able to kind of problem solve with people. And that's a soft skill in some ways, but it also can translate to a technical skill. And that's what Sammer's at, or Sonic the Hedgehog, I'm sure my son would really appreciate your, <laughs> <laughs> your photo. Uh, what do IT companies and departments generally value more, soft skills or hard skills, technical skills? Well, I can jump on that question. It's kind yeah. of what I was just talking about. So we like to call soft skills, power skills, or employability skills, they're so important. And so in over 20 years of running uh, tech companies and helping people run tech companies, this is another secret. I've never seen anyone let go over hard skills. I've only seen people terminated over soft skills. So if at the end of the day, what's more important, it actually might be those so-called soft skills. But the tech the, the hard skills open the door. And that's what certification really verifies for an employer that you have express the interest, applied yourself, made something happen, and that you um, can handle the pressure of an exam to do that. So that's yeah. a soft skill in itself is, is test taking, but the, the hard skills you're proving, um, I wouldn't say are less important. You, you need both to get in the door with the hard skill and then stay inside the door with the soft skills. I one time got a job offer from a company. They gave me a, a series of grueling interviews. And near the end, they said, James, what are the things that motivate you the most? That was a soft, some sort of soft skills question, right? And but without realizing it, I answered, well, fear and guilt. You know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right? and, and, and I got the job offer and I said, what, you know, what, what tipped that? And they said, well, James, you're really good at putting people at ease. And we need people who have the, that kind of skill in the, in the security and the IT world. So just throwing that out there. You know, yeah. you make a very good point. We are going to see a lot of people interested in tech careers that might be coming out of hospitality, customer service facing jobs in uh, travel, retail, um, industries that are more impacted by this current crisis. So those skills of, those soft skills of uh, listening to the customer, understanding the problem, uh, being able to communicate clearly what the solution can be, all those so-called soft skills are so important in tech and mm -hmm. in fact are often lacking in tech. So you'll have a leg up if you have customer service experience to bring to bear. And back to that question about what job should I get to help me move forward in my career, any job will do it if you can get customer service skills. Yeah. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Okay, our next question is from Gabriel. I'm interested in a career in security and I have little experience in IT, but I have explored web development. Is it possible to get into IT security with certifications only or should I pursue a degree? That's a James. Good, yeah, that's <laughs> James a good, S. James S. All right. Yes. Uh, you no, know, that's a good roadmap uh, uh, question. And uh, what you can do is go up to CompTIA, check out our, our uh, roadmap, not only our cybersecurity roadmap or our infrastructure roadmap, but we have a whole cyber, uh, sorry, a whole certification uh, roadmap that shows you the different choices that you can make for, oh my goodness, tw close to 15 years, I uh, led a, an organization that did web development certification. So I know kind of what you're wanting to do. I have a pretty good idea of that sense. And uh, a, a career in web security, uh, web development, and also cloud security, that is something that is a very bright future for you. So yes, you can get into IT security um, with certifications, yes. Uh, you could also pursue a degree. It's nice to have both, but you don't necessarily have to have that four-year degree. I know people uh, with four-year degrees in English who went into uh, development. I know people with four-year degrees in, in uh, uh, economics who did the same thing uh, and did very well. They brought their experience in. And so I, I would focus on essential skills such as Python, let's say. That's, a, that's the poster child right now. That's a good one. Um, s s scripting, um, JavaScript, things like that. So those are things that I would consider doing, whether it be a degree or certifications in that area. 
Yeah. And you know, what's funny. Um, I, we were out at RSA in San Francisco earlier this year before everything kind of came to a halt. And um, one of our SMEs that we had out there came from a web development background. And she's kind of an interesting case. She's a cybersecurity specialist um, for a great company here in the Chicago area. Um, she still volunteers and works part time um, doing, you know, IT help desk work um, just to kind of keep her skills sharp and everything like that at a local library. Um, but what she said is that what's really interesting about web development is that you you speak one language in web development and then actually you know kind of how to secure it by way of knowing how to build it so it's kind of really cool to be able to tie those two things together mm -hmm. Yeah, I so, would say we see lots of people progress without degrees. We see people come into the industry through apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. That's a really great way to earn and learn. You can search in your area. If you search um, apprenticeship opportunities in IT in your area, you might even find some there where you can gain experience. Some employers will help put you through training later too. You can look for employers who will do that. That's amazing if they'll help you through a degree program. We have some companies who do that. And of course, CompTIA Tech's another opportunity as well. If you need the structure of a program to get through, that's something that a degree yeah. program can offer too, right? If you can put it together yourself with our pathway um, and then get job experience and add to that, you can always go for a degree later too. It's never too late. Yeah. Take all, uh, different types of learnings. You can go, go any way that, that suits you. Well put. The other thing I'd say is if you, as you go into cybersecurity, the more languages that you have under your belt from a technical perspective, the better, because you're going to be asked to audit web servers. You're going to be asked to, to audit all sorts of code. Sorry. Oh, you're great. You're, no, this is perfect. And I think that the, the learning thing is really interesting too. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit to James C with this next question, but you know, yes, there's the online or the, the degrees that you can get that are maybe four years, two years, whatever it may be, but we also have live online training, which is a new solution too. So um, James, this next question is for you and maybe you can kind of touch on uh, the live online training too, but which is better for a beginners, uh, for beginners, CertMaster Learn or CertMaster Labs? And if I use CertMaster Learn, is CertMaster Labs still necessary? Yeah. Um, so in this specific case, I would recommend CertMaster Learn. It's a comprehensive product. It's built on all the exam objectives, um, hundreds of questions. It's got performance-based questions built in and, and flashcards, basically everything, everything you need to know in order to go from zero to 100 on a specific topic. Labs or CertMaster Labs is generally for individuals who have already ex had some kind of experience and training that's already been performed. Um, and now want to kind of move towards applying, getting practice with the actual skills within that kind of level or, or hierarchy of, of exams. So um, for beginners, it's definitely Cert Master Learn. Um, and that's, yeah. That's awesome. And then live online training is a new solution that we brought out um, just recently in the past few months. Um, so I'll touch on that real quick. Live online training gives you something where it gives you that structure and you have an instructor. Um, it comes with some of the CertMaster products, which is great. And um, then you have that instructor there to guide you through it. And you have your own cohort there as well to work alongside people. So if you do like that classroom setting, but maybe a four year degree isn't there for you right now, that's totally fine because live online training is definitely a solution that we can do. Okay. Uh, one, one additional oh, okay. thing, uh, one of the great learning uh, things that I find is uh, copious amounts of chocolate. Uh, <laughs> as, uh, just... I had a right. Spanish teacher used to throw that in the classroom for right answers. I think it's a great technique. Yes. <laughs> All along, I guess that's why I've learned so well is because of all of the chocolate that I've been consuming. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, now that's a, that's totally top secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next question is from Gussie. Do you have any suggestions for how or where to look for part-time jobs during the current crisis that the world is facing with this pandemic? I've been hearing that they are really hard to come by. Well, this too will pass, right? You have to remember we're right in the very middle of this situation, but it's not too early to get started and looking. So I think your question is still well-timed. You need to make sure your resume is impeccable. No typos, people. Really, send it to your three friends and have them check it. it. It's easy to have something like that slip by. Look at the formatting. Make sure that is just so beautiful, as well as your LinkedIn profile, because people will go there to look. And then you should probably think about your entire online profile. There should be nothing there that you wouldn't want a potential employer to see. So spend some time getting ready to apply. Now you're going to be ready to look for those jobs, right? So let's do be creative about how we look. You want a part-time job. So I'm asking myself, is that because 
you can't work the normal work hours or is that because you're doing something else and don't want more hours? Um, IT is a very flexible industry, so there might be a shift that starts later in the day um, that's available to you, even though you're thinking part-time. So really think through, do you mean you only want 20 hours a week for another, another reason, or is it just you want to be you know, home with your kids or something during the day? So really think through, because there'll be more options open to you if, you, if your, your parameters are clear. Then you can look at all the standard job boards. You know, we have, um, you guys are all familiar with those from Dice and Indeed and Glassdoor. Um, there's a lot of places to look. Craigslist is a great place to look, I hear, for beginning jobs, too, in your region. Yes, Field Nation, Craigslist, those could all work. Those, we've got a Glassdoor, awesome. uh, the Glassdoor job app, that might work. Mike Dunn threw that in. Yeah, yeah. yeah Mike, Mike also said ZipRecruiter and Indeed and Monster. Mm -hmm. All yeah. of those are really good solutions. It's going to be a new hobby for you, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's going to take some discipline. Yes. So you should probably calendar a certain time that you put into that. You know, it could be a couple hours on a Saturday morning before everybody else wakes up that you're going to really spend focused quality time on that where you're not interrupted. And then have another time midweek where you check in. Because if someone pings you for response, you need to make sure you're responding to that email. And they're probably going to email you. It's not going to be a phone call. I think most of the first responses will be that way. So have everything ready to go. If you have a dorky email address, fix that. You want to be, you know, Sally Smith at gmail.com. You don't want to be something that people kind of question what that is. And you want to also have your phone ready to be answered because yeah, you, you don't get many second chances. I think that's what I would really say. This economy is going to, going to weed, um, weed people out based on that. But, um, it, there is a bright spot in tech hiring. I think relative to other industries, we will see opportunity continue from what we're seeing in early data. We've seen a lot of that already, but the, the, the rest of the story is yet to be written, but be ready is my message. And then go online and really do your homework. Um, you can also do a trick in LinkedIn. So if you know a job title you want to go for, say IT support generalist, and or you want to say like maybe start with help desk because we're here at the beginning. So just put help desk and then you can pick your region so you could say San Francisco Bay Area help desk jobs, and you can go find people who have those jobs, and they might be connected to you, or they might be one or two hops away, mm -hmm. but you could contact those folks with a message and say, hey, I'm looking, how do you like working here, and is there any opportunity at your company? I would really get good at looking around. It's amazing what you can find when you dig. Absolutely, absolutely. That's great. Okay, we've got um, time for probably a couple more questions. This has flown by, you guys, and this has been really helpful, even for me, listening to uh, these bright minds that we have on the screen. Okay, Rue Zala says, what IT careers are the most in demand at the present? Uh, starting at the beginning, like you mentioned, uh, Amy, I would think that, uh, well, I, uh, our research has shown things like Tech support, remote work, that sort of thing. Helping remote workers, that's one thing. Uh, if you go further up the stack, as it were, you have people who do cloud, cloud security, things like governance, uh, things like that. Those would be uh, uh, in demand. But when it comes to the skills that you need for somebody who's doing remote tech support, how well can you handle an application that won't start? And how well can you remote into somebody's computer and, and help them, put them at ease, and then solve that problem? It's those kinds of the skills, for example. Absolutely. And I think, you know, what's nice is that we've got that new research that just came out when it came to cyber states, but then we also have the IT careers roadmap, which mm -hmm. helps you kind of determine what those are. Because I mean, for some of you, this, you might be new to IT and you're not even sure what role to look up um, to then use Amy's tips and James's yeah. tips. Uh, definitely take a look at the roadmap because um, that'll give you a few highlighted roles as well as what your next move could be. Uh, so we kind of are able to map it out that way for you, which is great. Yeah. I like that. And if you're starting at the beginning, think of it like a maybe a pyramid. You know, you're going to get a broad base experience and then you can get more specialized later. It's going to take you three certs to even get past that base. So you can you don't have to commit to being um, going into cyber or going into cloud yet. Let's get that strong base in fundamentals Foundation. and mm -hmm. security and networking. And then that'll add on. But we're seeing um, uh, numbers come out. Uh, and we'll have another report next month. So we'll be updating that constantly. And those links we've posted um, will really help you see in your specific metro area too, what jobs are the most demand. 
Absolutely. This is actually a, a question, Jerry, thank you for asking it. Um, we got this last week too. And what is the age limit for someone to be an IT specialist? And I think it's framed interestingly because there really isn't an age limit when it comes to it. But Amy, I'll let you tackle this age question when it comes to hiring for an IT specialist. Great question. I can understand your concern. If you've already had a career and you're switching and you're coming in a later, am I too old for this? Well, first of all, discrimination in hiring is not allowed. So the, there is no age limit by anyone's book. The key thing to remember though, is are you willing to start at the bottom of a new ladder? Because you've maybe been on a different ladder. Now you're jumping over to a new ladder. Do you really want to go down? So the, again, the trick there would be to set your expectations on learning something new, being ready to be a, have a beginner's mindset and, and, and build, but take what you already know, like we've talked about from another domain, build on something you know so that you don't enter at the very bottom. You enter as a subject matter expert at, on, at one, and on one side and you can add the technology on the other. I don't think there's any age limit for where you could do that. And a lot of these jobs are actually sort of um, invisible jobs. Like you're working remotely and people might not ever see you. How would they ever know how old you are anyway? So if you feel self-conscious about being a beginner, maybe you can find a place where you can yeah, be a little more anonymous even. But I don't think you need to be self-conscious about that. Yeah. I'll tell a story. Uh, my, uh, my mom, I think she was a tech support for her. Uh, she was in a genealogy club, as it were, right? Doing a lot of that. And she became the tech support uh, person at, uh, at 70. Uh, and, and she continued that through the, her early 80s. So I don't know. There's, there's some sort of answer. Uh, it, it's never too late. Uh, the only way it becomes too late is if you stop learning, stop reading, stop doing. You know, right. Point. Doing it's it's a mindset more than mindset. an age, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Austin even said too, the imposter syndrome in IT jobs, lots of us feel that. And we hear you and um, we've even written a few articles about that too. So um, you guys, this has been super fun, so educational, and we're so happy to hear from all of you and help you along your way. I saw that Mike Dunn is in the chat. Mike, we want to know how, how you did. I know that last week you were waiting to hear if you were the you know one of the last two finalists for a job. So we definitely want to hear from you and get an update on that. Um, Mike even just gave us a, a little nugget of knowledge. I always say that you're not selling your knowledge at an interview as much as you're selling yourself. And that is yeah. so true um, yeah. because people, you know, they're interviewing you to make sure that you know that your, your skills, but they also want to know, okay, is this cool? Is this person cool to work with? Like, do I want to have them on my team? That's absolutely the case. So uh, Mike, please let us know how you're doing. Um, we're really excited to hear from you. And of course we love seeing you guys every single week. Um, we are going to see you guys next Wednesday at 7 PM Eastern time, 6 PM central right here on YouTube. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more Amy and James squared. It has been a pleasure. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight and thank you everybody for tuning in. This has been super fun. We appreciate it. We'll see you later. Take care everyone. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye.